In this video, I want to provide a little bit more intuition as to why we can think about least squares geometrically. In particular, I want to explain why you can think about the column space of the matrix of independent variables of x as representing a kind of vector space. So imagine that we have some sort of model, which is we have our dependent variables. So we have y1 through yn as a vector of our dependent variables. And that's equal to some matrix of our independent variables, where the first column of that matrix is a constant, and it's equal to 1. And that might be because of the fact that generally in models we include a constant. And then the second column of this matrix might represent the values of the independent variable, which I'm going to call x11, um, where the second one here represents the fact that we're talking about the first independent variable. So the first component would be x11, the second component would be x21, and then the sort of last component would be xn1. And then if we imagine the situation where we just have two independent variables other than the constant, then the next first component is going to be x, uh, what's this going to be? It's going to be x12, then it's going to be x22, and then finally we continue all the way down to the bottom where we get xn2. And because we've got three independent variables, well, we've got two and a constant, we're going to have three parameters. So we're going to have beta naught, beta one, and beta two. And finally, we've got some sort of error vector, which is u1 through un. Okay, so I've spoken about how we can regard this matrix as a particular vector space. And I spoke about the column space of this particular vector. But why was it actually the case that I could sort of think about it in this manner? Well, it becomes more apparent if we rewrite this matrix as a sort of matrix of vectors, where the first vector, v0, is just this column. So it's just the vector of ones. The second vector, v1, is just the vector of the column, which is all the observations of our first independent variable. And then the final vector is the vector, which is this column here, which is the vector of the second independent variable observations. And we're still multiplying this through beta naught, beta one times beta two, well, and beta two rather. And then we're adding on our error vector, u1 through un. Now, if I expand this out, we can just do it as if we're multiplying two vectors. The first component is just going to be v0 times beta0, the second one v1 times beta1, and then v2 times beta2. So if I write that out in full, we've got beta0 v0 plus beta1 v1 plus beta2 times v2. And then finally we've got our error vector u. So when you write it out in this form, it, come, it becomes quite apparent essentially what the role of the parameters is. Essentially what the parameters do, beta naught through beta two, is they tell us how much of this particular vector and this particular vector and this particular vector do we need to get as close to y as possible. So essentially if we were to represent this sort of diagrammatically, the idea is that there is some parameter vector, oh, sorry, there is some dependent variable vector y, which we're trying to get as close to as possible. And so, what these parameters tell us is that in order to get as close there as possible, we go along v0 and we go beta0 times v0 along that one. And then we use a different vector. So now we're looking at v1 and then we must follow that for, let's say, beta1. So that second vector is beta1 times v1. And then finally, we've got some other vector. And obviously, this is in more dimensional space than I can actually draw which is v2, and we go v2 times v2 along that. And the idea is that this particular space, which is spanned by these three vectors, represents a kind of vector space. And if I sort of illustrate that here by just some sort of plane, then the idea is that after I've followed this vector through to here, then the error vector, u, should actually be orthogonal. I haven't drawn it very well here, but it should actually be orthogonal to the plane. So that's kind of how we define the error vector u. It's, it's sort of orthogonal to the plane after we've got as close to y as we possibly can do on the plane. 
But the bottom line is because of the way in which we can write our matrix, we can think about each of these columns as representing a vector. And, and hence, we can think about the space which is spanned by each of the different columns in our matrix as representing some sort of vector space. And we call that vector space the column space of X.